<sighs> Caffeine is delicious, but can it make you better at sports? Caffeine is a popular drug with a short half-life of 2 to 10 hours, and its performance-enhancing properties have been studied since the early 20th century. As a supplement, caffeine doses range from 3 to 6 milligrams per kilogram of body weight within the hour prior to performance, and caffeine has been demonstrated to be effective across a range of sports. Improvements have been observed in speed, endurance, strength, and power. And caffeine can also improve recovery and pain tolerance, even reducing delayed onset muscle soreness, allowing athletes to go harder, longer. It is important to note that habitual caffeine use develops a tolerance that reduces these benefits, and their magnitude generally diminishes into insignificance within two weeks of chronic use. And that brings us to the downside of caffeine. Major disadvantages of caffeine are speculative at best, but it has been noted that caffeine impacts the cardiovascular and central nervous systems, though the magnitude of these effects is still being investigated. Common side effects of caffeine are insomnia and depression. Feelings of anxiety are common, and alone or combined with sleep impairment can wreak havoc on athletic performance. Other impairments include lapses in attention, reduced reflexes, and diminished planning capacity and creativity, while increasing risk-taking behavior, altering leadership, reducing productivity, and increasing injury risk. Caffeine withdrawal, even just a night's sleep, can result in headaches, increased depression and anxiety symptoms, and reduced motor task speed. It is yet unclear if the perceived benefits of caffeine are just a reversal of withdrawal symptoms. Can caffeine be toxic? The oft-prescribed dose of 3 to 6 milligrams per kilogram of body weight is safe, but toxicity can occur at plasma concentrations of 15 milligrams per liter, with lethal concentrations ranging from 80 to 100 milligrams per liter. Death happens infrequently but the victims of caffeine toxicity tend to be infants, psychiatric patients, and athletes. Again, these cases are rare, but worth keeping in mind. So, your body, your rules, right? Well, if you participate in a sport under the authority of an athletic organization, the answer is probably not so much. Prior to 2004, the World Anti-Doping Agency banned caffeine before moving into the monitoring program. The NCAA doesn't seem to care what the World Anti-Doping Agency thinks. They do things their own way, sensible or not. Caffeine is altogether banned by the NCAA according to their current banned substances list, a list that, according to its own disclaimer, is not exhaustive and cannot be relied on. In the fine print of the organization's drug testing program, it is stated that a urinary measure of 15 micrograms per milliliter is the upper limit in an athlete's system. That number might as well be zero. A single serving of coffee or tea can result in a plasma caffeine concentration of 2 milligrams per liter, or 2,000 micrograms per liter, 133 times the maximum allowable concentration under NCAA guidelines. The effects of caffeine on performance run from small to moderate, negligible in some cases, but the effects of withdrawal have to be evaluated when considering supplementation. If a slightly higher jump or the potential for strength endurance seems worth it, then 3 mg of caffeine per kilogram of body weight may be advisable to start with. Monitor your sleep and fatigue, and of course consult a physician before starting any supplementation to your dietary regimen. Be mindful of your organization's rules concerning caffeine, even if they don't make any sense. That's good. I gotta get some more of that. What? You think I only drink coffee? So believe it or not, I've been asked to discuss caffeine supplementation specifically in regards to basketball. So, here goes. Caffeine has actually been shown to improve some areas of basketball performance, increasing jump height, while also increasing body impacts without modifying heart rate. So press on, you uncaffeinated defender. In addition, caffeine use has resulted in increased sprint velocity, increased number of sprints, and increased total distance covered by running and sprinting. Small to moderate improvements in perceived exertion and perceived performance have been demonstrated as well. However, if you're looking for enhanced agility or skill-specific improvements like shooting and dribbling, look elsewhere, because caffeine ain't going to do that. It's not all mediocre gains either. There's a flip side to this coin. Higher prevalence of insomnia and even deficits in dribbling performance have been observed. Basically, basketball 
overall skills may see a small to moderate improvement at the cost of sleep impairment, which may diminish other skills as a result. Still, research has shown improvements in other areas, such as endurance, strength, and fatigue resistance, so it takes a personal inquiry into the risk versus reward of taking the supplement, just as it would with any other substance or training modality. Ultimately, the choice is yours. Make the best one you can. Cheers.